Hey everyone, Aaron Blaze here and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips. Okay, so today I've got a very short uh, tutorial for you. I'm going to show you how to make reflections, a very simple kind of quick fun technique to uh, create reflections in water using Photoshop techniques, okay? Uh, first, I want to give a big shout out to Wacom and all of their great products. Check them out, wacom.com. Wacom is the company that makes the hardware that I use to create my digital images on. Uh, today I'm using a Cintiq HD22. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. I do all my drawing and painting right on there. And then also, if you want to see more tutorials, more of my demonstrations, that sort of thing, please check out my website. It's creatureartteacher.com. That's the art of Aaron Blaze and it's creatureartteacher.com. But so now let's get over to uh, the image today and I, what I want to show you. Recently um, I created this image of a tiger sitting in the water. I the beauty of working digitally is that I can create image, images really quickly. If I have an idea for something, I can get it out quick. You know, this is a painting that I did that only took me about an hour, uh, hour and 12 minutes, hour and 15 minutes to do. And so that being said, I was able to get the idea out fast. One of the reasons I can go so quickly is that, there, that there's shortcuts. And here, the biggest shortcut I, I did was creating this reflection in the water. You can see I've got this nice, very convincing reflection of this tiger in the water, but I never actually painted it in there. Let me show you how I did it. I'm going to take this, I'm gonna move it aside, and I'm gonna bring over another one, another version of this painting in a less finished state. So right now you can see I've got, a, if you look over to the right, I've got a, layer that is just the tiger. So the way I did that was I, when I painted the tiger, I did it in multiple layers, create, you know, uh, just so I could build it up from light to dark and back again. But then when, once I got that tiger to the way I liked it, I compressed all the layers together into one. So now if I turn it on and off, you'll see that it's on its own layer. If I move it around, you can see it just sits there by itself and it's sitting on this nice dark background. Now watch this. This is very simple, but this is how I create the reflection. Let's go ahead and come over to that layer, over to the right. I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to double it. Okay, so I've created a new layer. I just repeated it by bringing it down to this little icon. And I'm going to grab the layer underneath, like so. I'm going to come over to Edit, Transform, and then come down to Flip. I'm going to flip it vertically, okay? Now watch what happens. Boom. Well, that's not in the right place. That's okay. I'm going to I've hit my Move tool up here. And I'm going to drag it down and look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's another thing too I want to mention that this really only works well when the eye is lower down, you know, low to the surface of the water, kind of probably within a 25 degree uh, angle off the water or less because once you get up too high that reflection changes and you can't simply mirror it you have to redraw it because you're gonna be if you're up high I'd be seeing much more underneath of the of the chin and the reflection that sort of thing but, but since the eye level is low to the water I can get away with mirroring this image like this now there's a couple of things we want to do to make it even more convincing this looks pretty cool already but watch this I'm gonna create a layer in between you can see that I can do that, or uh, well, I'm, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this. Let's just grab a mid tone, like so. I'm gonna fill it. Oh, what did I do? I just lost everything. No, I didn't. Watch. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna hit multiply. Now everything got a little bit darker. Now I can drop that opacity down. So I can see through and now you can see that reflection is a little bit darker because reflections tend to be a little bit darker. You're not getting as much light bouncing back to the eye as, as the actual object. And so that's why your reflections are going to feel a little bit darker. Another way we can do it is if I want to keep that background 
pretty much the same. I can go to my reflection, go to image, adjustments, come to hue and saturation, and there's the lightness control. I can just go in and I can darken it. And that's a simple way of doing it as well. So um, pick your, pick your, you know, it's, it's, it's your choice. You can do it any way you want. But either way, so I've got it down to a value that I like. It's a little bit darker. It feels right. But it's still not distorted. It doesn't quite look like reflection. Well, the next thing I like to do, because even though even a mirrored surface in, in the water there, there tends to be little imperfections here and there. One thing I like to do is I'm going to come up to the filter. Once again, staying on my reflection layer, I'm going to come up to the filter, come over to blur, all right, and then come down to motion blur. Okay, now you'll see right here, I can control what direction I want that blur to go. So I want it to go straight up and down, 90 degree angle. Now watch, I can control, if you watch the reflection, I'm going to blow it up a little bit so you can see a little better. Like I can make it go a lot. See how much, how much distortion I get? I don't want it to go that much. I just want to take it out just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of blur, a little bit of distortion. There we go. Can you see that? That it breaks it up just a little bit, makes it feel a little better. And then on top of that, I can go in and maybe there's some might little micro ripples or something in the water. I can grab my smear tool, come up to my airbrush setting, make that brush fairly large. Now watch, I can come in and pick areas that I want to blur out. I'm going to knock up the power a little bit more. I can blur out some of these areas even more. Some of the areas that I think, well, they're gonna, they're gonna get a little bit more blurry. I'm gonna make that brush a little bigger. I can just push that blurriness there. See that? Already that feels pretty good. Now, I can do some more. Now the cat sitting in the water, he's gonna move around a little bit. You know, it's gonna cause little, little ripples in the water. So, back to my airbrush, I'm gonna make that about 55 pixels, we'll do it that size. I'm gonna hit my tapered setting there on that icon there. I'm gonna keep the strength at 52. Keep it on smear. Now watch, I can come in. Oh, look at that, I'm creating little, and I'm following those contours. Following the contours of the body. I can create Look at that, little ripples. That one felt like a little too much. I can go back and undo that. There we go. There. There, just, all it takes is just a little touch here and there. And it's very, very convincing. See how I'm just lightly, lightly touching it. Look at that. Now, another thing I can do is I can... I'm just gonna experiment with here. Watch this. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Now maybe some of these ripples are such that it's, I can catch little pieces of the, of the tiger's head up here. Well, I'm gonna grab my stamp tool. All right, I'm gonna bring that down. This is just an experiment. I've actually never tried what I'm gonna show you, but I just got this idea as I was watching, as we were doing. I'm gonna press the option key. So uh, when I press the option key, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be, picking the, the section that I'm going to be repeating. So I'm going to pick a spot right here, take my finger off of it, and I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try something. It's kind of interesting. See there? Just breaking it up even more. It's a little... Not quite what I was hoping for, but once again, I can come back to my smear. I can soften those guys up, make it feel. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of cool. Let's break this up a little more. Make it really make that feel like water. There, look how nice that feels. All just by doubling up go. I'll just by doubling up this layer and playing with the, some of these functions. Look at that. 
So one last thing I like to do, and you can see I've already indicated a little bit there, but I like to grab, you know, the, the light coming in is kind of uh, bright and warm. So I'm going to grab some really bright highlight here. I'm going to create a layer on top, right over everything. Hit my brush tool, got grab a nice, uh, I've got a lot of, you can see I've got a lot of custom brushes in here, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab a standard brush that you can get in, in standard Photoshop. And I'm going to make it nice and small. Blow this up. And I'm just going to go through, actually I'm going to go even brighter with it. Very, very bright. And just create a couple of little highlights where light is catching right on that, right along the edge, right where the edge of that water connects. It just adds a little bit of, and then there might be, I don't know, there might be stuff sitting on the surface that'll add to it. You know, you can, you can add, you can see, let me drag this over. I drag this over you can see I added a whole bunch of different little floaties on the water and the lily pads they all add to that illusion that I, you know we've got a reflection or adds to the illusion of actual water so now in just a matter of minutes look how quickly we created this really cool reflection and now all of a sudden this tiger sitting in the water so there you have it. Very quick tutorial today on how to quick, uh, create very quick reflections in the water in Photoshop. I hope you learned something. Go ahead and give it a shot. So easy, so effective, a lot of fun. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye.